Hello, this is the Math 125 Fivity Exam 3 review. I'm Dr. Tatiana Kodorowski, and in this video, I'm going to go over graphs of trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions take angles to ratios, but they themselves have a graphical representation. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do number 28 from the review. And in number 28, we are asked to graph the following function. We're asked to graph f of x equals negative 2 cosine of 4x plus 2. Now this is uh, some several transformations done to the cosine function. So we're going to use transformations of functions to graph this one. So first we're going to start with the graph of cosine of x. And whenever you are graphing, um, whenever you are graphing trig functions, you always should, your graph should have enough information. Your graph should have enough information to gather various things about your function. For example, the cosine function oscillates between one and negative one. Um, and it has a period of 2 pi. And we're going to make sure that this is seen in this graph. So the graph of cosine looks like this. And I'm just going to graph one period of it between 0 and 2 pi. It goes on uh, further, but I'm just focusing on one period. So this is cosine of x. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to figure out what cosine of 4x looks like. So I'm going to do a horizontal stretch, and I'm going to write down the function for cosine of 4x. Now, with cosine of 4x, and again, just as, a, as an aside, as a reminder, if you have a function that looks like a times cosine of bx, let's say plus, plus some vertical shift, then the period, the period given by this um, omega, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, whatever is multiplying x. In this case, in this instance, b is 4. So omega is going to be 2 pi divided by 4. The period is going to be pi over 2. So this means the entire uh, revolution of the cosine function is going to have to oscillate between um, 0 and pi over 2. So, but we're still between negative 1 and 1, and so the graph of my cosine function is going to look like this. It's going to do a full go, a full period between 0 and pi over 2, and then it's going to do another full period, and it's going to do another full period, and another full period. So what this means is between 0 and 2 pi, whereas cosine of x just went through one revolution, cosine of 4x goes through 4 revolutions. Next, I'm going to scale this by negative, um, by negative 2. is in addition to scaling my graph I'm also going to be flipping it so now my graph is going to oscillate not just between negative 1 and 1 it's going to oscillate between negative 2 and 2 because I'm going to vertically stretch it period is not going to change at all. 
the period is still going to be pi over 2. All right, so let me draw this graph. I'm going to flip it across the x-axis, and so it's going to look like this. It is stretched and Notice I have the minus sign flips it, so what I have drawn is I have drawn negative 2 cosine of 4x. And now the final bit, I need to add a vertical shift of plus 2. So the final, my final answer is going to be here. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to shift everything two units up. So now my function is going to oscillate between 0 and 4, and the period is still going to be the same, pi over 2. So now my cosine function is going to look like this going to start at the origin and it's going to do a full revolution like this. Its midline is now y equals 2. And so now what I have graphed is I have graphed negative 2 cosine of 4x plus 2, the function that I wanted. And it still has a period of, um, of pi over 2, so this is the final answer. And um, various facts about it, if I'm asked about it, the amplitude of the final function is 2. The period of the final function is pi over 2. And if I'm asked for the midline, the midline is the line, the horizontal line, y equals 2. So this is the graph of negative 2 cosine of 4x plus 2. Next, we're going to answer a problem in reverse. This is number 32. What's going to happen here is we're given a graph of a function. So we're asked to identify the trigonometric function graph below. When we look at a graph of a trig function that's given to us, we look for the same things we've identified before. We looked for its period, we look for its amplitude, and we look for its midline. This function that's depicted Looks like this. And so we want to extract all information from it. So we see this is either a cosine and sine function, and 
there can be two possible answers, one where you uh, write the algebraic expression for it with a cosine function, and one with the sine function, we'll write both. But certain things are still, um, still the same, still are going to be the same for both of them. The amplitude, the amplitude here is one. The midline, this is not shifted anywhere, so this is either going to be a sine cosine function. The midline is the line y equals zero. But the interesting here, uh, the there is also the um, period. In the period, you look at one um, crest of the wave, and this one appears to be at negative pi over four. And then you look where the second one stops. The second one stops here at about between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, which is 7 pi over 4 over here. So the period, the period is still 2 pi, just like with a standard cosine and sine function. The period is still 2 pi, but there's a phase shift. The entire cosine or sine function has been shifted. So, um, there is a phase shift, um, and it depends on whether you want to model this with a cosine or a sine function. So let's say we want to write this down with a cosine function. So with a cosine function, there's a shift of pi over 2. So if we want to write a cosine function, this cosine function is going to be cosine of x plus pi over 4, there is a phase shift of pi over 4. This means that from the standard cosine function, this whole thing has been shifted pi over 4 to the left. So there's a shift of pi over 4 to the left. If you want to model this with a sine function, this is fine. The sine function is going to have a shift of 3 pi over 4 to the left. So this has a phase shift of 3 pi over 4 to the left. Either of these is an acceptable answer to this problem. So either of these is the solution. The most direct one, I'd say, is the cosine one, because the shift is lower. Again, remember how the regular cosine function looks like. The regular cosine function, I'm going to draw it on top here, would look like this. We'll go from here to here to here. This is the function cosine of x. And the function that we were asked to graph is the function cosine of x plus pi over 4. So if we were to plug in x equals negative pi over 4, we'd get cosine of 0, the same thing as if we were to plug in um, 0 into the original cosine function. So this is the graph of cosine x shifted with a phase shift of pi over 4 phase shift to horizontal shift to the left. The next such similar problem we're going to do is number 34. Again, we are asked to identify the trigonometric function whose graph is below. And again, we look at the same things as we did before, the amplitude, the period, and so on. We look at between what y values the function oscillates. And in this case, The 
function looks like this. And so again, we extract all the information from it. The amplitude is between what and what the function is oscillating. The amplitude is 3. The midline is still the x-axis. The midline is y equals 0. Um, the period is, well, we have to draw points at full oscillation. So it starts at the origin and it does a full rotation and then it ends up here. The period is 2. And I want to model this using a sine function because I recall that the standard sine function starts at the origin and oscillates between negative 1 and 1. So I know that my function is going to look like 3 times sine of b times x. And I want to know what that b is. Well, I know the period is 2, and I know, again, recall, that if I have a function a times sine of bx, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. In this case, b is 2, so the period is 2, so we want to know what b is. So we have 2 equals 2 pi divided by b. And we solve the equation for b. 2b equals 2 pi, meaning that b equals pi. So this means our final answer for the graph of this function is 3 times sine of pi x. And this is the final answer. You could, of course, um, also write a cosine function that models this, um, that an expression using the cosine function that will give you this graph, but then you're going to have to include a shift of um, 90 degrees over. And this is the most direct answer to this question.